All right, we got some Captain Marvel for you right here. We got a small grouping of about seven uh, comic books, all in various stages. Some nice reader copies, certainly, if you're looking to complete your collection. But let's get into it. I'm going to take some photos of these as we go along. And that's going to allow you to see the front and the back. But we're also going to show you just a little bit more. So here we have Captain Marvel, number one. We're going to show you the front cover right here as we get a couple of shots. We'll show you the back cover. And this is some um, mostly second appearances. If you remember, uh, Captain Marvel made his debut in, I believe it was, uh, it was Marvel Superheroes number 12 the year before. But this is 1968. They thought, man, he's doing so well on his own. Let's give him his own book. So in addition to the front and back covers, we're going to show you a little bit of the wiggle jiggle. What do we do here? We're going to shine the light all on the corners, on the uh, cover. That way you can see any of these little creases in here. So not the best, not one that I necessarily would send in to get graded. I do want to point this out right here, that little bit of, uh, you can see that? Yep. Uh, so not the best, but certainly a great way to complete your collection. We'll show you the back as well. This is Gene Colan, Vince Galletta, Roy Thomas doing the work here. And then something that we do here, we'll show you a little bit of the interiors. Why do we do that? Well, one, because back in the day, 1967, Johnny might have written his name in the front or back covers. Two, uh, to show you anything that might pop up on the inside of these missing pages, bad staples, etc. And three, uh, just to give you an idea of the quality and condition of the pages. Now, what you consider to be uh, white or off-white, I might consider to be uh, yellowing or brown or ecru or who knows, this gives you a chance to see it for yourself. If you were here in the gallery with us, you'd have to bring your owl card and check it out for yourself, but we're going to do our next best. And finally, we see here uh, the inside cover. Again, back in the day, that might have been when someone decided to write uh, pictures or, or draw or do whatever, so we want to make sure that you're seeing it. And we'll show you the inside cover of this as well. you got second appearance of uh, Captain Marvel, second appearance Carol Danvers, Ronan the Accuser, and some others, so a great book right there. We're going to move on to Captain Marvel number three. What happened to number two? Don't know. Didn't come in this particular collection, but you're still going to get a chance. So you see uh, the Super Scroll right here. We're going to flip it over, get the next shot on the back before we move right on. Again, Marvel, Harold Danvers in this one. We'll show you all the way along. A little bit better cover on this one. This is actually not too bad. Some ticking right there. A little bit of issues around the edges, but not bad at all. This is one that you might want to put at the top of your collection. We'll show the Roman soldiers right there before we get into it. So I'll show you just a little bit of the inside cover. I always want to try and get the inside cover there before we flip through just a few pages. We can't show you the whole thing for a number of reasons, not the least of which is a copyright issue. And it's also fun to see some of these old ads. Again, really nice copy right here for your collection. Moving on, we are still in 1968, this time with number four. We have the Submariner making an appearance right here. And we get a couple of shots for the catalog. Ooh, a little bit of issues on the back. Perhaps nothing a, uh, see that writing right there? Perhaps nothing a, a big press and clean might not fix, but We'll let you judge for yourself as we roll along here. Feeling a little bit of stiffness, and you can see here this is a newsstand um, version with a stamp on it. Perhaps that looks like it says American Express paid, so who knows? Who knows what was going on there? But uh, are newsstand stamps considered damage? Yes, sometimes. No, some other time. It depends on you, and that's why we show it to you. Yeah, I'm feeling stiffness in this cover just a little bit, and also I see. A little bit of rust there. Let's hope that's not water damage. We'll get into it in just a moment and check for certain. Again, Vince Coletta, Dean Colin. Sadly, his past. Roy Thomas as well. All right, we'll show you those. Okay, good. I'm not seeing any uh, of the telltale signs of water damage. So that's good. But are seeing, oh, look at those stamps, or those uh, staples. Really, really rusted out there. The pages are surprisingly good. So this might be a good one for that collection. And again, the inside covers will show as well. Too shabby. Moving on to number five here with the Metazoid. 
Got a couple of shots for the catalog right here. You got Don Heck on this one at all. And we got a couple of shots on the back cover before we show you. A little brown on the back of this cover right here. Again, not surprising given its age. All the way back to 1968. Really the, the heyday, the beginnings of the Marvel Universe as we know it. Not too bad cover right here. I'm not seeing a ton of ticking. I'm not seeing oh, these corners. I, I would like to be a little bit better, but overall not too shabby. And when else are you going to get a chance to see the Metazoid? Not too often, I'll tell you right now. I'll show you right here. For a moment, I thought that was a Marvel stamp, but or a Marvel value stamp, but we're too, too early for that. It was 1968, after all. We'll flip through a few of these pages so you can get an idea of what you've seen before we finish off here. And some heck art on this one. And finish it out there. We're going to move on. Let me get a couple of good shots here of Captain Marvel number six. You got Jan Rog in this one. You got Errol Danvers and Marvell, as always. A couple of shots there. Again, Arnold Drake, Don Heck. Ooh, looks like somebody. Can you see that? Let's get that light on there. Right in there. So it looks like somebody used this as a writing ta tablet. No writing on the cover itself, but an imprint. Will a press get that out? I don't know. That's up to you. But otherwise, not too shabby, and when else are you going to get a chance to read about Jan Rog? Sounds like a uh, Lovecraft <laughs> old god, doesn't it? We'll get that. I don't know if I got that photo, so let's just get one more real quick right there. And we'll open it up, crack it open, see what's inside. Yep, looking good on the inside covers, not too bad. Again, for a moment there, I thought it was a Marvel value stamp, of course not. Way too early in the Marvel history for that. Moving right along here. Let me show you this. Almost like an, an early version of Abomination, yes? And then we have the inside covers. We're moving right along. We've got the coming of Quasimodo. Quasimodo, by that point, certainly would have been a non-copyrightable character name, so I'm not using it. This is number seven. Captain Marvel number seven, also from 1968, getting near the end. November 1968. Yeah, some issues on this cover. Certainly see them arriving right here. And then there. Take it over. Nice to see Captain Marvel in his own costume, that green costume, before they switched it over. Not that there's anything wrong with the new costume as well, but still just interesting to see. We'll get a couple of cop uh, shots of the back. Right into the inside. Looking good. This could be better. I'd rather there not be that crease. A little bit creasing up there, but as a reader, I like it. And moving right through. Looks a little Thanos y. Right, not Thanos. Looks a little dark sidey, doesn't it? And we finish up. This cover's a little looser than I would like it. it puts too much stress on it. It's not going to fall off, I don't think, anytime soon. Hey, Sam Rodin, making an appearance here. And there you go with the inside covers. Just as you see them. We're going to finish out this little grouping right here with number eight, also 1968. Let's get a photo. Let's try and center it. It's a little bit nicer. We'll do the same on the back here. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll show you the first appearance of CyberX. If anyone at all out there cares. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you are a CyberX fan. Maybe CyberX will get his own full-length movie. Maybe he'll get a 12-part miniseries on Disney+. Plus. Who knows? Is that likely? No, no, it is not. Is it possible? Sure. And when it does, oh man, this is going to be the book for you. All right, we're going to open it up. So a minor key on this one for those who care about such things. A major read for those of you who really enjoyed this seeing some of these vintage Marvel comics. This is very, very Kirby-esque, just in storytelling form, what's going on, crazy dude bending things. All right, finish this up. You're going to get all of these books, all seven books, 
all in one lot. All one money and all you have to do is head on over to thebigtoyauction.com where you can leave those bids right now or join us live on auction day. Either way, we will see you at the auction.